Grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text of our meditation is from our gospel lesson, specifically where Mark records, And Jesus awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Here ends our text. My dear Christian friends, he's often referred to as the reluctant prophet, Jonah. Now, he was called by Yahweh Elohim to bring the word of the Lord to the land of Assyria, specifically to the city of Nineveh. That's where the prophet was to go to, this huge and, frankly, terrible city, the capital of Assyria. It was a place that was rife with sin, and it was definitely the, the very center of a culture that was at war, not only with the people of Israel, but ultimately with Yahweh Himself. Now, as you all probably know, this was not something that Jonah wanted to do. He hated the people of Assyria, and I do mean hated. Amen. <laughs> he hated them, and he even later on confesses to God that he didn't want to go because he knew that God is a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. He did not want God to be merciful to these pagan enemies. Instead, he would rather see them like Sodom and Gomorrah, literally overthrown, utterly destroyed. So what does he do? He runs. He runs in the literal opposite direction from the place where he was supposed to go. He pays a crew that was bound for the port of Tarshish. And there's some debate about where Tarshish actually is, but one of the places that it could be is as far away as the Strait of Gibraltar, clear across the Mediterranean Sea. All of this he did so that he could get away from the presence of the Lord. That went about as well as you would expect it to. Yahweh never takes lightly when his chosen prophets rebuff his call. So if you'll indulge me, and feel free to Break out your Bibles in the pew in front of you. This is going to be in Jonah chapter 1, starting at verse 4. We're going to do a brief reading from the prophet Jonah. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the, thr the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. And they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down but was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots. And the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, 
the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to get back to dry land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they called out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. That storm... It had a purpose. It was a guide, uh, shall we say, to gently, gently lead Jonah back on the way that Yahweh had set up for him. The God of heaven and earth had given him a purpose, and even though he tried to run away from it, Yahweh still had that purpose in mind for him, guided him back into it. It hurt. No question about it. There was great terror. And people who were, for all intents and purposes, innocent, they were terrified. They were terrified of paying the ultimate price for this one man's sin. But they listened to the word that the prophet gave to them. And they did what they would prefer not to do. Did you hear it? They, they did not want to throw him into the sea. And they begged for Yahweh's forgiveness, even as they were chucking him into the waves. And the result is, the sea calmed. The result is, Jonah got back on the road, if you will, albeit through an unusual means of a fish-whale thing. And the result is that he got back on the road to do what Yahweh had called him to do. And a really cool result of this is that a crew of unbelievers feared and worshipped the one true God. Now, the storm in our gospel lesson, I'm sure you heard a lot of similarities. But the storm in our gospel lesson is a bit different. It's true, once again, that this storm does not come about in a natural way. Certainly, Yahweh sent that tempest down upon the Mediterranean. But this one, At least the way that you read it in the original language, in the original Greek, the way it sounds is that this storm was not sent by God. Permitted by Him, but it was not sent by Him. It actually sounds as though this storm came from the enemy. It was attempting to assert His dominance over the God-man who had been such a thorn in His side for quite some time. This is not the rebuke for a sinner. What you see here is the father of lies LARPing, live-action role-playing as the king of creation and lying to the face of the Creator. 
He whips up this cacophony. He causes all this panic amongst the earthly-minded disciples. And in their trepidation, they rouse their master from his sleep. Teacher, why aren't you doing something? Don't you understand that we're going to die? They are freaking out. Jesus doesn't participate in their alarm. He simply stands. And with the same word of rebuke that he uses to expel demons from their host, he muzzles the chaos. Peace! Be still! And the wind ceases. And there was great calm. The storm that Jonah faced, it was a rebuke from the Creator. The Creator of the wind and the waves. He was a weak mortal man, a hateful sinner in need of correction, and that is how God chose to correct him. The storm that the disciples faced it was the rage of a supernatural despot, the desperate ravings of a devil who has already lost, whether he knows it or not, whether he chooses to acknowledge it or not. But in both of these storms, God uses them for His purposes to demonstrate His power, to demonstrate His mercy, His beneficence, and he certainly uses it as a call for sinners to recognize their sinful nature. To repent as mortal men come face to face with impending death. And also into both of these storms, the Lord of lords speaks peace. He speaks peace because these storms are as nothing to him. He is in complete control of all things, even though the waves crash, even though the thunder cracks and the winds howl. He's got this. He proved his mastery over these elements as they obeyed his command and cease their discord. But let me tell you, he demonstrates his mastery in a much more clear, much more irrefutable way as he deals with a far deadlier squall. And that's a storm that began spinning a long time ago when Adam and Eve chose to rebel. And as with Jonah, it's a storm that would require a sacrifice to still the chaos and the cacophony. But a sacrifice that Jesus is more than willing to make. In the same way that he stills the seas and the winds, so sin, death, and the devil are silenced before him before the Creator of all things, as He dies and as He rises from the dead. Now make no mistake, the storms, they still rage, literally, <laughs> and certainly in our lives individually. The winds still blow. They still cause fear and trepidation, and rightly so. There was no guarantee that Jonah would be saved temporally by this fish. God may have let him drown. And he certainly could have raised him from the dead, or he could have used a different prophet for his purposes. There's no guarantee that the boats wouldn't capsize on the disciples and those who were with them. No guarantee. Indeed, it ought to be assumed by us that a day will come when you and I, we will enter into a most violent storm. 
death itself. And we won't escape from that. And that's okay. That's okay because we have Jesus. And I don't say that flippantly. I don't say that as a dodge. I don't say that to be idealistic. I say that because it's the truth. It's the truth and it makes all the difference in the world to us because you and I, we have the promise from God himself that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We have his promise to be with us to the very end of the age. We have the promise that the day is fast approaching when the Lord of all creation will return. When he will tell sin, death, and the devil once and for all to sit down and shut up and they will have no choice but to obey. The disciples asked it, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? My dear friends, you know him. This is Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. This is the one who is our Savior, true God and true man, crucified and resurrected for you. This is the Lord of all creation. And make no mistake, at His word, any and every storm will be silent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.